Well, hello and welcome to Teenage Thursday. And listen, you saw today's special guest. Um, I want to start by saying that, you know, when I was, I think when I turned 18, my mom signed me up for an American Express card. And she said, you know, one day you'll need credit. So let's build it now. Let's build it now. So I had an American Express card all through college. And one, one of the things she would say is if you do not have a way to pay the bill, then you should not swipe. So if you don't have any way to pay for it, and that was my beginning understanding of money. And um, I would attribute a lot of my basic understanding of financial literacy to my mom based off of what she knew. And so I've always been an advocate of our kids having an understanding of not just credit, but cash, um, cash flow, investing. And so when I came across Letitia Williams on Instagram with her name just being Gen Z wealth, like, everything about wealth building for Gen Z. I was like, it was golden. So I've been stalking her for quite some time, which is what I typically do when I see someone doing something so instrumental that I feel is necessary for my kids. And so I want to brag on uh, Letitia a little bit. She is a mom of two girls um, and they're bright because I've watched quite a few of their videos. One is eight. I believe one is 15. Um, and they are authors. Um, they are business owners of their own vending machines. They have multiple vending machines in different locations. Um, so you get the trend here when we're talking about wealth building and different sources of income um, and different streams of income. Um, I think Letitia gets it. And I'm excited to bring her here to share with you because while our kids are making their first life decision after high school, which is what will be next, a lot of that is associated with money and financial ability. So the more um, we can help them make a concrete decision, um, I feel they make the decisions in more, with more confidence. So um, without further ado, I'm going to bring up our guest today is Letitia Williams. Um, how are you? I'm great, and you? Thank I you for that. Good. Girl, that was nice. <laughs> it's true. I didn't say anything that wasn't true. And so I hope you feel like you got your flowers while you're still here. <laughs> Um, Letitia, Letitia, I said Letitia earlier, Letitia. It's okay. <laughs> um, I'm going to get it right. Cause I don't like when people butcher mine. So, um, what is it that you do? Like in your own words? Cause I could put my own words together, but and if you had to summarize, what it is that you do? What is your genius? My genius is to just pour into children with any knowledge that I have, but I do like to focus on money, wealth building, investing. So I am a kid money coach. I like to teach kids about money. It's just my passion. I love children. I love pouring into them. Yeah. And that's what I do through my children and everyone else's children too. Yeah. Wow. Yes. Um, a kid money coach. So, t so tell us, how did you get started? And like, how was that like a thing? When, where did that come from? So that just came about this year. Let me give you the long story of um, how my passion has developed over the years. Um, so when I first began working, I started, no one knows this, um, except for the people that used to work with me. But I used to be a correctional officer. And while I was a correctional officer, yes, I was locked behind bars for um, eight hours, sometimes 16 hours a day. But while I was there, I had the opportunity to work with young kids who were incarcerated for adult crimes. And when I worked with them, I just realized that like a lot of them, yes, they made poor decisions, but they just needed guidance. They just needed guidance. Um, so I was there for some time. I was there for about seven years. And then I moved into social work and I was doing social work for kids who were in foster care. So again, it's pulling on my heartstrings. Mm -hmm. Um, I just always felt bad for the children who were in these, um, negligent households or situations. Um, because again, all they needed was guidance and they didn't really have the correct guidance where they right. were. Right. Environment. Um, I then moved into a role that was more positive and that I was still working with children. I was a summer youth employment program manager. So I was employing 8,000 children every summer, 8,000 kids I'm touching every summer and they're getting little jobs. They're getting their little checks. 
Um, some of them, of course, this is their first check. They they have the biggest smiles on their face, like, oh my God, I got a check. The checks was like $300 and they were so excited about the money. So I went from a negative environment to seeing this positive light with children. Again, the children are my passion. So now I see like, this is what lights them up. They like the money. Um, so I stayed in that role for a while. And then I moved into something else. But when I moved into something else, I noticed that I have children, right? So the same pouring that I was doing into these other children, I started doing it to my own children. Because now my oldest daughter, like you said, I have a 15-year-old. So now my oldest daughter, is she was about 13 at the time. And I'm like, okay, this is the time that you start learning about money. Let mommy pour into you. Um, so she did get a job at the place that I was employed at too. And she got her first little check too. So that was just like a win-win situation. Mm -hmm. I, I'm working at this job and I'm employing kids. My daughter is at the age where she can get a job now too. So she got a job too. And that's where it started. She started asking about money. Um, mm -hmm. I then knew that um, there was more to do with money. Um, you, you just don't get a check and go spend it. I knew that I had to teach her something else. Okay, now you're making money, but you can't just spend it. You can't just go buy the new Yeezys, the new um, iPhone. Mm -hmm. Let mommy help you. So I started looking into wealth building myself. And the first way that I learned was through stocks. So we went to a stocks class and um, I took my oldest daughter with me and we just began learning about stocks. Um, how to invest your money, what to do with your money, um, how to make your money grow. Um, so I'm learning all of this with my daughter. I'm learning all of this with my 13 year old. She was 13 at the time. Um, so remind you, I have an eight year old who was six at the time, right? Um, I'm like, well, she doesn't really understand stocks. So what else can I do to help her understand how money works? She can't get a job, right? She's only six. So I said, okay, let me, you know, think of some things of how she can learn about money as well. And I thought about vending machines. Um, she actually brought the idea to me and I was like, yeah, that's pretty dope. Let me teach you about money and investing through vending machines. So that's what I did. And that's exactly how we got started on our journey. And of course, because my passion is all children, I went back to all children. Let me help these parents teach their children how money works. Because some of us parents don't know either. Some of us parents don't know either. So, you know, what better way to learn together? You guys are learning together. We're all playing catch up. It's a 400 year wealth gap, right? So we're all playing catch up. Play catch up with your child. Give them a head start. Um, I love that, that you met her where she was. You mentioned yeah. that you mentioned one of the words, one of the things I'm really keen on is language, language that's relevant and relates to them so that they can yeah. have a curiosity and understanding and an interest. Yeah. And so you didn't have an understanding of vending machines, but you knew that it could generate money and it was of interest. So you were tying the two. To me, that's like that's what we call making it practical, making it applicable, making it relevant. And so I yeah. love that. Meet them where they are. Meet your children where they are. Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. Why would you say it's important for our children to have an understanding of financial literacy? It's very important. So I just mentioned the 400 year wealth gap, right? So we're in a place where um, we're not learning or our children are not learning what they need to learn at school, how to be successful in life, not just working a job, you know? So there's more ways to be successful than to just go to school and get a job and retire. There's more ways out there, but we didn't learn that. So yeah. that's why it's so important. It's important because it was it was not given to us and we have to go out there and get it on our own. So sometimes when you have to go out there and get it on your own, a lot of people don't do it or they don't they don't feel the importance of doing it. Or, you know, I'm good with just a job and just retiring. No, financial literacy is something that we weren't taught, but it's something that we absolutely need because when we don't understand it, we put ourselves at um, at risk of failure. We put ourselves at risk of failure and debt. I don't know if you went to college, but when I went to college and left my mom's house, I didn't know anything about money. I was getting all the credit cards in the world just falling into debt. 
in my twenties. And guess what? I had to pay for that in my thirties. So Absolutely. we just pay children from that. Absolutely. Yeah. I watched the video of um, you and your daughters doing an interview, and I'm I'm a cre- I'm not a creep, but I've I've been lurking. Okay, I've been watching you guys, studying you for some time, because I'm a fan of your work. And one of the things I keenly remember your daughter saying, the 15 year old, she said, you know, I'm not interested in going to college. I'm interested in real estate. And you all know that now. So your financial strategy is not college savings. Um, what was your initial reaction to her telling you that very like keenly? She and she seemed very confident when she said it. So that was the second time I heard her say that. Um the first time I heard her say that, she was like, yeah, mom, I don't think school was for me. And I was like, girl, what? What you mean you don't think school was for you? She was like, I mean, high school is cool. I know I have to do it. But beyond high school, mm-mm. if I'm not going to be a doctor or a lawyer or something that I have to get a certificate or a degree for, then I don't really think I should go. So, you know, it, it took me some days to process it and I'm like, well, am I doing her a disservice by telling her, okay, don't go. Um, you know, but that that's the pressure that we have on us as, as parents. You're always wondering if you're steering your child in the right direction, but I trust my child. I trust her because I have given her the foundation of decision-making. Yep. Um, and if she decides to change her mind, she changes her mind. We yep. all change. We all change our, and she totally could as an adult and she could go back. So okay. if there is, you know, I think that there's some power in, um, in giving the freedom for them to make the decision. Yep. And in that power, I feel also is relationship building. And yes. when you've developed enough trust and, uh, and I, I would say enough, um, not just cohesion, but communication with your child, mm-hmm. if the decision changes, they will come back and say, I changed my mind. And there's nothing wrong with that. Yep. Nothing wrong with that. But until um, then, learn for real estate, I got to find us some real estate classes to go to. <laughs> tell me about these different ways that you and your girls are studying to generate wealth. Like when you talk to kids or children, teens, parents of teens and kids, like very practical. This is how you generate wealth. What were some of the things you would say? So in Siani's book, Siani has a book called How to, how to Start Building Wealth in Your Teens. We talk about five ways. Um, and the first way is to invest in your mindset, just like how you saw Siani. Siani is the 15 year old um, talking about how she wants to do real estate. That's from her building her mindset. And you build your mindset by reading or um, watching another adult. Um, it doesn't have to be your parents because sometimes our parents don't know. A mentor, a teacher, an aunt, an uncle, someone else who is in a space that you desire to be in. Pay attention to them. Pay attention to them and ask them, how how did they get there? Because if you want it, it's okay to copy someone. It's okay. You have to copy the right cat, though. So um, the first step is to invest in your mindset. Know that if you want something, and you, you have to go after it. And if you see someone already doing it, go copy them. Go copy them. Um, the first way that Siani started was reading books. I told her to read uh, Rich Dad, Poor Dad for kids, for teens. Uh, it's amazing. Um, and then the second way that we build wealth is um, side hustles. So the vending machine is one of our side hustles. Again, I use it as a teaching tool for denim to learn how to invest. Third way is we, we invest in life insurance. So life insurance is a tool that the rich use to, I'm going to say hide their money because you can put your money in life insurance and not get taxed on it. And you can take your money out in 40 years and not pay any taxes on it. Okay. Um, So I do use life insurance for the kids. Um, And especially since Siani said that she didn't want to go to college. Um, I knew that a 529 plan was not good for her. And a 529 plan is a college savings plan. So instead of dumping my money into a college savings plan, I needed to dump my money into something else. And life insurance was that tool. It has many benefits. Um, What was I on? Number four? Mm -hmm. Um, Stocks. We invest in stocks. And yes, your child can invest in stocks at their age. You can begin investing in stocks the day you are born. Um, 
that's a long term, a long term wealth building tool for us. We do not do like day trading. I put a set amount in that I can afford weekly or monthly, and I just let it build for the kids. Um, and then the fifth way is um, real estate. So we do do real estate. My husband is the face of the real estate business. Um, we support him, but that's his passion and that's what he does. And this is my passion over on this side. <laughs> I love it. The whole family working together. Yes. I love it. What was the first one? I got side hustles, insurance, real estate, stocks. Your mindset. Your mindset. Follow someone who um, is already where you want to be. I love it. You know, we're now in the graduation season where our kids are graduating from high school or they have graduated or will graduate from college. And I'm a gifter. So what would be a gift that uh, would be a it would promote wealth building um, that we can begin to one frame the mindset of them, of our children and to maybe jumpstart their goal of generating wealth? What would be some good gifts to give? So I'm going to give you three. Um, the first one is my daughter's book, How to Start Building Wealth in Your Teens. It goes over the five things that I listed, how you can begin doing that now at mm. whatever age you are at. Um, and then the second one is the other book that I recommended, um, Rich Dad, Poor Dad for Teens. Mm. Rich Dad, Poor Dad in itself is a life-changing book for us adults. So he's broken it down for teens in their language. Mm, I love that. So that's a good one. And then my third one is, you guys, you can buy stocks, stock gift cards for your children. I'm going to give you, this is a gym, um, the, the app that I use where you can um, open up a brokerage account for your child is called Stockpile. It's called Stockpile, S-T-O-C-K-P-I-L-E, Stockpile. You can open up your child a brokerage account. You need their social security number, and you can buy them gift cards. Mm -hmm. Don't buy them any more iPhones. Don't buy them any more Yeezys. Buy them an um, a Apple stock. Buy them a Disney stock, and you can give them a gift card for their graduation gift. That's the best gift. I Start building wealth and tell them don't touch it. And don't touch it. Delay gratification. Delay gratification. My sister turned 21 um, last year. For her birthday, I got her um, an initial deposit down on her IRA. And I showed her a chart if she were to contribute $100. Every time she got, my, my sister's a hustler now. She do hair. She works. She, she was working two jobs while she was an undergrad. And I said, if you just deposit $100 by weekly, that's $200 a month. This is how much money you'd have. She was like, what? I would be a millionaire. I was like... Yeah, that yes. small amount. That's and small. So, um, she just graduated um over last weekend, and I gave her another lump sum of cash, and I said, "What are you going to do with it?" She said, "I know I have my account. Okay, okay, sis." Yes, um, train yeah, that mom. So I um I didn't think about stocks. So when you said that, I'm like, "Oh, I got another gift idea." I'm very familiar with Stockpile. And I've seen those gift card gift cards, and I'll be yes. sure to share that. Also, that is a gem. That yes. is a gem. Um, if so anybody's stop. watching, if you have questions, um, shoot us your questions. I, we would love to answer them while we have our, our kid money coach. What were you about to say? I was just going to say, um, Stockpile teaches you about stocks too. So while she's investing in her IRA, she can learn what they're doing with her money in her, in the IRA through Stockpile. I'm share that. I'm going to share that. And, you know, one of the things that I've done with her is I learn. I don't just tell her, read this. We'll read it together. So there's this book. I don't know if you're familiar with. You probably are Anthony O'Neill. He has this book, Debt Free College Degree. And um, I purchased it on Audible. And when she would come home during the semesters, we would listen to it together. It's my way of getting her the, getting her the information and then letting her know, well, I'm going to learn alongside of you. Yeah. So I always use Audible as a great um, reference tool for parents who say, my kid's not going to read that book. Find another way, like meet them where they are. There's, I, I, don't, I hate the excuses that we give them, their attention span. It doesn't interest them. They don't like it. Find a way to make it relevant and for it to catch fire now. I love it. And that's so true. And you got to meet your children where they at and you have to know how they learn. Yep. Speaking of learning, because that sounds like that's definitely your lane. What 
other books? You've already given us two. So are there any podcasts, magazines, TV shows? Are there any uh, series? Are there any uh, documentaries? Mag- like, what would you recommend? Like, what can people start to consume, both parents and their children? I am a book person. Um, I did used to listen to podcasts. And the only one that I listened to was a real estate podcast. It was called Bigger Pockets. So if parents, if you're out there and you're interested in real estate, um, Bigger Pockets is the best one. Um, and I know if you guys are not following Earn Your Leisure already, um, they are awesome. Um, they're on Instagram and they have a YouTube channel. I think they have a whole university now. Um this is for parents as well. Um, kids, if you're interested in reading, and I'm pretty sure they probably have an audible now, but Think and Grow Rich, the Black Choice version. I mean, that is like my Bible. I use it. I can open up to any page and just get motivated. Mm. Any mm. But Thank those you. are recommendations. I can't think of anything else right no, now. No, that's good. Listen, <laughs> you've got to start somewhere. You've already given us about seven tools. You start somewhere. And it's so funny, the algorithm of anything, once you start digging into something, other things will appear. I love Earn Your Leisure. I yes. love Earn Your Leisure. Practical, real people, real stories, look like you and I. You know, they I'll... have a handout. Yes. They worked. They were disciplined. You know, it's uh, it's a great, it's definitely a great resource. So I'm glad you mentioned that. Um, I want to put you in a hot seat. With some uh, fire off questions, I'm going to ask you, we only have 15 seconds to answer each of them. And okay. be honest now, as quick as you can. All right? Okay. Okay. <laughs> what do you do for fun? I hang with my kids. <laughs> who inspires you? Um, Anyone who's on their hustle. Anyone who's out there grinding. Y'all inspire me. Anyone. Mm, what is your why? my kids my why is to show them the foundation that anything can be done um you want it you go get it you believe it you can achieve it just teaching my kids that what's the best advice you've ever received um success is on the other side of fear just do it um it's called courage when you when you're scared and you do it anyway just have courage mm. If you could do one thing in life over one thing, what would it be? I want to say nothing, but I'm not going to give you that dry answer. No, it really is nothing. Like life is such a teaching tool and even all the failures in life, you learn something from them. So don't regret anything. I don't regret anything. Yeah. But if I could do something over, I wouldn't have spent $100,000 on college debt. I would have, and if anyone is out there listening to me that's going to college, don't be afraid to go to a community college at first. Don't Say be that. afraid to pick up a trade. Don't, don't be afraid to do that. You don't have to go to a four-year college. Start anywhere. Take a class here and there. Start anywhere. But that's the only thing that I would have done over. I love that you talk. I am an advocate of the community college. It's not where you go. It's what you do with the resource that you own, what that you yeah. have, that you have privilege and access to. It's what you do with it. It doesn't matter how small it is. It doesn't matter if it's not notable. It doesn't matter if nobody else went there. It's you. Because I've yeah. seen, I've seen parents so six figures into their children to attend the best school, but their mindset of their child was waste. not even ready for that environment. It was a waste of money. I've seen kids go to Berkeley and USC and, and they come home and they, I'm almost like, how? Like, how, Sway? Make it make sense for me. But it's the uh, mind. It's not the environment. It's the kid. Yeah. It's so kid. it's not a pass to put them in the best place. Like, it's a pass to get them in the best place in their mind before you yeah. send them. Exactly. Ooh, exactly. Now, listen, now I'm on my soapbox. Okay, we had a question. Um. Uh, it looks like someone wanted to know, uh, Joaquin wanted to know, what was the book again? Think and Grow Rich, The Black. The Black Choice. The Black Choice. Okay. Okay. Awesome. Thank you for asking that question. I don't see any other questions. Is there anything you want to leave us with tonight? If you have a parent watching who's like, okay, I get it. I need to think about this. I want to be, I want to sow uh, seeds of financial literacy. Like, what can I do with some very practical things? How can I find a lady? Like, what would you say? <laughs> 
follow me. Um, I'm on Instagram at Gen Z, G-E-N-Z, Wealth Building Academy. Gen Z, such as um, Generation Z. That's what our children are. They are Generational Z um, youth. And I just love to pour into Generation Z kids because they are the future. Um, any tips for any parents? Um, a lot of us don't know everything. And that's okay. You don't have to have everything figured out today. Don't have anxiety about it because there are a lot of parents out there who have anxiety about their kids not having all the information that they need because mom doesn't have all the information she needs. It's okay. You start where you are. Um, and that's what I help parents get comfortable with. You start where you are. Don't be embarrassed if you don't know what an interest rate is on a credit card or if you don't know what a loan duration means or all these fancy word means. It's okay. You can start anywhere. And today is the day to start. Um, just as long as you don't keep making excuses. Um, today is the day to start. You have a child that is looking forward to you showing them the way and lead them into a, a financially lit future. It starts with us. I love it. Thank you, Letitia. Thank you for being creative, innovative. Thank you for showing up for your girls. Thank you for making it practical, relevant, and fun. I definitely recommend that you follow her on Instagram for content it's easy to consume. It's quick. It's cute. Um, and when you see her girls, especially both of them, 15 and 8, I, I feel like they get it. Like to watch them get it, like to get cash flow, to get credit, to get why you don't why there's another way versus exchanging exchanging time for money like they get the concepts it's it's infectious so i'm bragging about her but i just go follow her i just just connect please <laughs> and so you. thank you thank you for joining us tonight um for our teenage thursdays for our educators and our parents thank you i really appreciate you <laughs> <laughs> all right bye bye see you guys bye so, you know, I, when I think about Behind the Genius, and I said this last week, the goal is to give you an abundance of different kinds of resources and ideas um, to share, to inspire your parenting journey, to inspire the conversations that you have with your children at home. I am a big advocate of open communication. I was listening to this audiobook today, and he said, when you have... He said, when you have, um, when you are comforted as a child, your ability to take risk and to be fearless, it's very, you don't have the desire to, because you were, you were coddled, essentially. When we coddle our kids, it's almost like we put a lid on their courage. And when I feel when we have open dialogue about things that we may not even be as knowledgeable about that we're learning, you could totally learn together. Um, when we introduce them new concepts and new things, like my mom did when she got me that American Express card, we're relationship building, but we're also transferring the knowledge. I say this often, if you passed away today, do you feel you have given your child all that you could where they could thrive? They could thrive in your absence. That's the goal. And as we're having dialogue in the car, at the dinner table, um, on our way to an event, um, leaving church, leaving practice, those small conversations, they matter. So if you were looking for a nudge or a push or a new topic to put on the table, I didn't give you one. I didn't give you one. So thank you. Thank you for allowing me to just share and bring people here who I feel like would be a great tool for your toolbox. Remember, you're the neonatal intensive care unit. Your home is the neonatal intensive care unit. God gifted you the human that you have or humans. And there's an expectation that you would nurture them for his purpose. And so we can't do that without knowledge. Without wisdom, our people perish. I could go on and on, but I'm going to shut up right there. I love you. I will see you next Thursday. Eastern Standard Time, 8 p.m., for another edition of Teenage Thursdays. Bye.